Hi friends, it's Julie McNamara, counselor at Gross Catholic High School, back for another college information video with my friend Joan Jurek from Education Hi. Quest. And hey, we're in the same outfit. <laughs> How do we plan that? <laughs> So today's topic is the admissions process, and I'm going to let Joan get us started while I run around the table. Hi, seniors and parents. Now is a perfect time to get started on the college admission process. You've had summertime, playtime, now it's time to get to work. We want you to apply for admissions to your top three to five schools. Nice little variety is helpful too. You have plan A, plan B, and plan C. What does that entail? Well, that plan A school, I kind of think of that school as your dream school. If there were absolutely zero obstacles, you know, finances weren't an issue, what would be that dream school that you would want to apply to? Yes. Plan B, maybe that's a little bit more of a realistic grab for you, for your college uh, choice. Maybe something, maybe it's a little less expensive, or maybe it's closer to home, or something along those lines, but something that maybe is a little bit more realistic. And then plan C, plan D, plan E, right, those three <laughs> to five schools, um, those would just be schools that are additional options, right, if you need mm -hmm. to make a different choice depending on whatever obstacle comes your way. Yes. So in addition to those three to five schools, right, um, I encourage students to include in those maybe applying to a private school and a public school. What is the benefit of applying to uh, maybe a, a private school when, well maybe not a benefit I guess, but my question maybe is sometimes I hear students say that they won't apply to a private school because they think it's too expensive. Really that's probably our issue here. So Joan, what do you, what do you say to that? Well, I always encourage students to not rule out a private school just because of cost. Julie's right. Initially, cost is going to look more. It's going to look higher tuition-wise. But those private schools also know that they need to help students out. Mm -hmm. So they have donors, benefactors, alums who help put scholarship dollars together to make college more affordable. So oftentimes your private schools can be just as affordable as your public schools. But apply, wait and see what kind of package they're going to offer you. Absolutely, and that's kind of the same story too for out-of-state schools versus in-state schools. Right. Those out-of-state schools are going to be a little bit more expensive because they're out of state, state. right? <laughs> and those in-state schools might may be a little bit more affordable. However, don't don't decide before even applying. You never know what that financial package might bring back for you, and it might make some of those schools affordable where maybe you thought they weren't. Mm -hmm. So, keep your options open during the application process. You make your decision after you get all those financial aid packages. Yeah, make an informed decision versus not knowing. Right. So the thing to keep in mind when you begin applying for schools, and I don't want families to be shocked, but there is typically an application fee yeah. to apply to a school. Um, however, um, well, those application fees can be anywhere from thirty to sixty dollars, can kind or of more. or more or more depending on the school. However, there are some opportunities to potentially get those fees waived. So Joan, can you give them one option? One option is by visiting the college campus. A lot of times those admission recruiters are going to waive your application fee maybe for a week or so after you visit their campus. Mm -hmm. So why not take advantage of that? 30 or 60 or more? That can save you a little bit of money. Right. And it's not a guarantee, but it is right. a possibility that it's that an, may happen. An option. Right. And if they don't offer, you can always ask. You can always ask the question. Yeah. Good. A second way that you might come across a fee waiver would be due to your grades or maybe your ACT score. Sometimes schools uh, have some information on you and they may send you a letter in the mail or they might send you an email that indicates you can apply for free. I always tell students these letters are not a hoax. It's a real thing. So don't throw the letter away. Don't delete the email. Those fee waivers are legitimate and certainly can be used. So keep, keep your eye out for those things to pop up in your email or in your mailbox. Joan, is there one other way 
yeah. that you can get away get around that fee waiver absolutely so sometimes students parents might be concerned financially of affording several different college admission fees if your family is up against a tight budget be sure you work with that recruiter or your great school counselor <laughs> and let them know what you're up against do not let that be a hindrance for applying for admission talk to those adults who can maybe help you out through that fee right it's always good to ask the questions absolutely the worst you can be told is no but you certainly might be told yes right. so we may be able to get around those application fees if finances is an issue for your family yeah okay so applications are typically done online i i hesitate to say all but most <laughs> uh, applications are done online and you'll typically need to have um, a transcript in some form or another. Maybe you'll upload that transcript or maybe you'll self-report your grades. In any case, a transcript is probably something you're gonna need for that application process. And the best way to get a hold of that transcript is to contact your counselor. Your counselor should be able to either email that to you or they could print you a copy if you find they would be helpful to have that paper right next to you while you're self-reporting your grades to a certain school. So talk with your counselor to get a hold of that transcript. And we might be have students or parents from other schools other than Gross that are watching this. And so always check with, also with your counselor. They might have an actual form that you have to fill out right. for a transcript request. Absolutely. Okay, so the Common App is a great tool that can be used if you're looking to apply to several schools. The thing about the Common App is that you're going to want to research before you really jump into the process to make sure that the schools you're wanting to apply to actually do utilize the Common App. I would hate for you to go in, do a bunch of work, and then find out that only two of the five schools you're looking to apply to actually use the Common App. So take a minute to research that or talk to your counselor. They can help mm -hmm. you figure out what schools are included in the Common App. But the Common App is a way to kind of help save some money potentially on application fees and it can save you some time in doing one application for several schools. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add on the Common App? One other thing is that if you do use the Common App, just understand that that co a particular college may still require just a little bit of extra paperwork. So it might not take care of everything that you have to do for a school. Right. Okay, so let's talk about the timeline. Mm. So we kind of encourage students to start that application process in September. September 1st would be a good time to get started on those applications. We want them to finish it up, be done by? November 1st. And why? Why November 1st? That seems awfully early. <laughs> <laughs> well, October 1 is when the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, opens up. So. We have students doing that FAFSA form October 1, sending it to their colleges, getting all excited about an award letter package, but if you haven't applied and been accepted for admission, you're not gonna get an award letter package or an offer, a financial aid package from that school. So we want you to apply, get accepted, get all of that done, so October 1, you can really focus on financial aid. That's right. Okay, so once we've had those applications submitted, the next thing to do is wait. <laughs> we did all that work and now we wait? <laughs> That's right. You're gonna wait for a letter, an acceptance letter, right? And the that, mailman. The mailman, <laughs> or it might come electronically to your email. Either way, when you receive those acceptance letters, the first thing you wanna do is tell your parents because they're gonna to wanna to know how you're doing in the process. The second person you're gonna to wanna to tell is your counselor because that is a celebration moment and we love to celebrate with our students. So when those application letters start rolling in, make sure you share the good news with your family and your counselor and maybe even social, social media, media, right? <laughs> Why not? Put it out there. Okay, so you've done your waiting, you've got your letters, you've celebrated and things are looking good. They are. All right, so to recap, we're gonna narrow down the schools in the fall, mm -hmm. okay? Start applying to schools by September 1st in hopes that you're done applying by November 1st. Get all the required documents and personal essays ready to go that, that, so that application process can run smoothly for you. Yeah. Work with your counselor to get the transcripts so that you can either upload or self-report grades. And while you're waiting for those acceptance letters, what can they do? 
apply for more scholarships. Yes, scholarships. <laughs> it's a great time to research and be applying for scholarships. There are certainly scholarships that have deadlines in the fall. I would say there's, there's a significant amount more of them that are typically due in the spring. However, right. there are some deadlines in the fall, so working on those scholarships at that time could be to your benefit because everybody loves free money. Right, early bird gets the worm. That's right. So <laughs> finally, in the midst of all of this, be preparing for that FAFSA to open up in October. October 1st will begin that financial aid uh, process. And so we will have another video yes. that will detail and kind of walk through the FAFSA process and hopefully answer um, some of those frequently asked questions. So watch for the next video on financial aid. There might be new outfits. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye.